Hi, everybody. All right, so I'm going to um, attempt a collage demo. I was going to, um, of course, do this in class. Here we are, stuck in our homes. Let's make the best of it. So here's what I've got um, set aside. Um, uh, turns out that um, hoarding art supplies was, in fact, a good idea. Um, so <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got, um, of course, the good old Clairol Dry Guy our favorite whiny dryer. Um, a little bit of ink, which a lot of you already have. I'm trying to work with stuff you probably already have around the house. If you don't, there's, you know, th there's uh, there's no need to run out and buy any of this stuff or order it in, of course. I mean, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna be working with today. Uh, a brush, it doesn't have to be a fancy one. It can just be even like for house paint. In fact, you could even use house paint for this. Um, I'm going to use a brayer and some printmaking ink, um, a little bit of Plexi. Uh, these grain rollers are really fun to use. So, um, and then just construction paper. All right, so let's get started. Oh, and this is just like a lino block. It's just like a, it basically is like, it's like a, it's almost like a rubber eraser, but you can carve into it to make prints, which you can see I've done. But um, I'm going to use the other side because I just want to make some like, pattern kind of prints that we're going to end up using for collage and then the goal is to work with the sketches you made for the um, CD cover and then make this sketch that you've created into a collage okay so with this printmaking ink this block printing ink there's a special sound you should listen for when you when you start the print. And that is this. Let's see if you can hear it. Hear that sticky sound? Hear the, the the ink? That's when you know you've got a good layer of ink. And now I could just use the brayer on this and just, you know, that's what I typically do to make the textures for my collage, but I'm gonna um, see what I can get out of something like this, if I can get something interesting out of this. Of course, I've like cut a section out of it, but who cares. The key with these uh, block prints is um, less ink is actually more. The mistake I always make when using these, when using the brayer and using and doing block prints is I always over ink. So it's actually best to go light on the ink and that that gives you the more interesting textures that we're going to go in for here might be nice to have a couple different sheets of this it's always good to have you know when working with collage to have more than you need so maybe we do one on another paper here I mean, this is nothing fancy. This is just like copy paper, right? Um, it's kind of it'd be kind of a waste to use um, good paper for this because you're just going to cut it up. Okay, so you can see in the sketch I've got, uh, you know, this hair coming down here. Um, so I'm going to try and use one of these graining ruler things. 
Um, I got this at the craft store. Um, again, you can probably get one online. They just, it's like a, basically a, a rubber thingamabob with these sort of like ridges built into it. Um, let's see what happens. I'm treating all of this as an experiment, right? So, so should you. Um, that's kind of the fun thing about this collage. You just don't, you never know what you're going to get. So, um, the element of surprise is important <laughs> with all of this. So, um, yeah, that's part of, part of what I like about, about doing this, right? Like, I just never know what exactly is going to happen. Okay, and then the same for the um, same for the ink. We're just gonna keep on going, making textures. Don't need a ton of ink. A variety of brushes if you have them. Okay, and lastly, I'm gonna um, <laughs> get into these rubber stamps. Uh, again, being a hoarder has paid off. Oh, look, here's some ink. And pad ink. Um, and I've, I've got this crazy collection of like a bazillion rubber stamps. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just see what we can get with these. So, these are just out of like big erasers. I just like carved. I wonder if I can, yeah, I can use this even. I carved a rip, tried to carve a repeat pattern um, out of just an eraser. So, let's, let's get into these. So I'm going to start just by like, you know, breaking this down into shapes. We've got like the face shape, definitely not going to do the lettering. Um, the face shape, the hair, um, uh, you know, maybe we'll do some strips of hair. I'll try and keep it simple for the, for the purposes of this video. Um, all right, so let's just go in. Um, I'm using an X-Acto blade now and a, a cutting mat. So for those of you who have not used an X-Acto blade, you can use scissors, you can use whatever you have around the house. But um, um, I like an X-Acto blade because it, I like the ability to be able to draw my line, um, to put, draw, be, draw, be able to draw my cut line. So um, I'm not being too concerned with, um, you know, uh, getting my sketch exactly right. If that is of concern to you, then you can lightly sketch out your your area that you want to cut in pencil, and then um, and then cut from there. But I am not really that concerned with it. So I'm I'm much more concerned about just sort of like the vague feeling. Um, and I asked you to make a square image, so we're gonna make a square image today. Um, I thought this would make a nice, uh, a nice backdrop here. Um, I'm not gonna cut the background yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut my, cut my shapes, and then I'll go for, um, then I'll go for the. Um, Then I'll go for the uh, the gluing because if you if you um, uh, the nice thing about collage is that it's sort of modifiable. If you cut right away um, or glue right away, rather, you're kind of stuck. You can be kind of stuck with what you've got. 
So, let's see. I'm just kind of going through and seeing what's floating my boat here. Um, this, unfortunately, is the same color as the background, but it could make for some nice shapes on top. This is kind of nice. I want to do like a general hair shape before we get into the the rest of it. I mean, this could be like a shirt or something. Let's give him a little shirt. And I'm, you know, and I'm also leaving leaving myself open to kind of surprises. Um, that's the nice thing about collage is that these these some things can kind of like suggest themselves to you, and all of a sudden you're you are presented with a really nice surprise you wouldn't have. Um, you couldn't have planned. Um, <clears throat> getting close um, just uh, again just cutting these these sheets of paper off I switched to scissors I um, got a good chunk of this sheet and just started cutting out teardrop shapes that are gonna live in the hoodie here so I'm just like again nothing is glued down yet um, because I want um, I might that's my dog barking in the background I want the X factor to appear and meaning like I want to use some of these scraps maybe in the background um, as extra texture and so, um, you know, and, and whatnot. So I was even trying like, what is what happens if I do this? You know, what happens if I put that there? Um, so um, I encourage you all to, um, to kind of play with this um, and, um, you know, Make sure you allow for X factors, um, allow for surprises to happen, um, and um, you know move the stuff around, play around with it. You know, place other sheets next to it, um, cut cut bits out, and see what that looks like. Um, if that is pleasing to you, um, all right. So I'm gonna start to glue stuff down, and I'll be back in a bit. Eight and a half. All right, that's eight and a half right there. So my crop on this side would be like here, which is fine. Um, I think that's gonna make for a nice crop. So anyway, there's my square, my square record cover right there. Um, so this is what I'm asking from all of you. It doesn't have to look like this. It can be your own version of collage. There's plenty of links. Um, I'm going to provide for you to get inspired. Um, hope this was uh, informative and fun. Okay.